Hello there. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, remove a, a QFN chip uh, from a board and uh, the tools that I use to do it. And I do quite a lot of these um, when I get boards back from my uh, assemblers. Uh, around about 5% or so uh, don't come up to uh, uh, full test specification. Um, and uh, so what I do is uh, I uh, remove some of the, uh, uh, the QFNs which um, have, a, have a, a known failure mode and uh, it's quite hard to test so I actually do this test uh, in-house uh, on each board that comes through although the, my assembler does do some tests they're, uh, they're not um, uh, fully uh, down to things like testing uh, stuff like phase noise um, and so uh, I do that uh, in-house because uh, the equipment to do that is uh, it's fairly specialised and um, anyway, the stuff I use to be able to um, remove uh, a QFN, I mean, bear in mind these are fairly small pitch devices. Um, I'm just going to go through now, but first of all, I'll just show you what the problem is. So I'm going to um, just show you the board that we're talking about here, and I'm going to try to zoom in on it a little bit and see if we can maybe maintain at least a little bit of focus. If or not, as the case may be. There we go. So this is the board that we're going to be looking at, and uh, you'll see there are actually uh, three QFN chips on there, and it's the one uh, that's uh, towards the right of those three, uh, towards the bottom right of those three black chips that we're going to be removing today. And uh, so I did quite a few of these, so um, um, I've got quite used to it, and I have a bag full of them. So. Uh, anyone knows what to do with uh, dead QFN chips then, uh, then please let me know. I did think about using them maybe as uh, uh, if you stuck them upside down on a bit of uh, a printed circuit board you could use them as lands because they have a, a power pad on the back, back of them. Um, that was one idea I had but uh, anyway uh, let's go through the equipment that I use to actually um, remove uh, these chips. First of all and possibly most important is you need to have something steady to uh, to have the board uh, in and as you can see I'm using a, a little uh, small vice here which I think is a jeweler's vice or something I've had this for oh I don't know how long 15 years maybe and uh, I keep having to uh, to oil it up and, and whatever maybe once every couple of years but uh, it's still there still use it and um, it's quite nice because it's a relatively low profile one of the problems of some vices is that they they can come up uh, sort of three inches off the desk and the problem is is that it means that you need to get your uh, microscope fairly high which then means you're quite high up um, over the device uh, that you're trying to uh, fix and uh, just doesn't it's not that comfortable so this is quite a nice low profile uh, thing that you can use you also see uh, in the background there uh, that I've got two different bits of solder um, my uh, solder you might be able to see in the background there I have two two reels of solder and uh, one's a, a fairly uh, a fairly uh, thin uh, I'm not quite sure how thin it is, but it is very thin. About as thin as you can go and still have some flux in it. Uh, and then there's some slightly thicker stuff as well. And I use both of them, in fact, uh, regularly. And uh, the other stuff that I use is uh, a microscope. This is a 20 times binocular microscope. Again, I bought this a very long time ago, maybe 12 years or so ago. And uh, although it's not Zoom, it's, um, it's, it's used on a regular basis every day, pretty much. And uh, the only problem with it is, is the light, and the light on it is a halogen light, which is, is great except uh, for two things. First of all, it comes in at a bit of an angle, not overhead, um, which is not, uh, it's okay. If you, once you've uh, set it up and got it working, um, it's, it's reasonable enough to get used to it. And the other problem is, of course, being halogen, every now and again, the worst possible time that the light, uh, the, the bulb goes. So, again, every sort of 18 months, couple of years, I have to replace the... Um, little halogen uh, bulb in there. So I generally keep a couple of those in stock because it always happens at the worst possible time and uh, without that light uh, you it's not very ha not much fun trying to actually uh, fix, uh, fix a board. And uh, next thing uh, in my uh, tools that I use for this is uh, you need some pretty good uh, wick so um, 
this is desolder braid or whatever you want to call it and uh, so I buy this as you can see on quite a big reel you don't need this big but uh, one of these reels will last me a couple of years but uh, I do do hundreds and hundreds of uh, <coughs> resolder jobs and the worst thing is he's running out of this as well so I like to have a nice big reel of it um, rather than a small one which I'm going to run out of um, fairly rapidly and I also have some flux remover, this, I have no idea what the carcinogens on this but it does smell pretty awful uh, but this is to clean the board up after I've uh, reworked it and uh, down here we've got some normal side cutters, cheapo things I think these are about five pounds or what's that, seven or eight dollars a pop um, from my local um, Maplins I think, again pretty old these are, uh, I tend to just uh, use them until they're, they're dead in the water and not not great tools but on the other hand uh, you know they serve a purpose and uh, my preferred tweezer is uh, is one of these this is um, I think it's a seven is the standard if I, uh, not sure if it's written on here yeah it's a number seven so uh, it's my preferred uh, tool like this, it, it depends, it's a personal thing, some people don't like the angled tweezer uh, for me, it's my cup of tea, so uh, that's the, what I use and then we've got a flux pen and uh, that's just put a nice bit of flux on, on there just to uh, get the solder flowing and regarding the soldering irons, um, let's uh, zoom out a bit um, this looks a bit scary here but actually uh, I don't use them all in one go uh, this is uh, just a selection here so uh, uh, you'll see uh, perhaps the the biggest surprise um, is this really cheap and cheerful I'm not sure I pronounce that Saike S-A-I-K-E 898D and I bought this again about oh I don't know maybe four or five years ago on eBay I think it was about 60 pounds or something and um, it's actually a dual unit it has a uh, both a, a hot air gun on it which is what we're going to use today and it does also have a, a connection for um, for a, a soldering iron a standard uh, soldering iron I'm not going to use that today in fact I don't use that very much I did used to use it quite a lot um, uh, but uh, I really used my uh, my wellers which I'm going to go on to uh, next uh, most of the time um, but uh, I know um, Dave Jones from EV Blog, uh, you know, w won't like it. But um, actually, the soldering iron on there uh, wasn't too bad, I'm afraid, Dave. So there you go. What can I say? It uh, served a purpose. And um, the next thing is the two irons that I'm going to be using today. They're going to be two wellers. Now you see, there's a whole bunch of irons here. There's the the ones I'm going to be using is this one, which is a um, a really quite a small tip. I'm not sure how well we're going to be able to show that. I think this is about a 0.25 millimeter tip, um, conical end. It's it's uh, very small, but uh, um, you'll see us using that. That's when we're actually going to be uh, soldering the pins themselves. And the other one is a standard chisel tip. Um, so uh, one of these irons is a WP80, and the other one is a, a, a WSP80. Um, they're not state of the art. I've had these irons for about 10 years, and uh, also the the um, desoldering stations I've had again. I've had for about uh, 10, 10 years as well. Uh, but with some of this soldering iron uh, stuff, you um, uh, if you get the good stuff, they'll last you for ages. The tip on the the larger chisel tip one, I've never changed the bit on that in all the 10 years I've had it. Uh, the LT1 tip on here I've changed once in, in, in 10 or 12 years, wherever long it is I've had it. Um, so pretty happy with that and uh, you'll see there's some, um, can we call it here, but it, it's cleaning your tip. And I also use the, um, a nice wetted uh, sponge and uh, those are my main things to clean the tip. Um, what I used when I first use a tip is I've got, um, see if I can find it now, here we go. This is what I use when I, I first get a, a tip um, out. This is actually this is a brand new one. Um, it's basically it's uh, it's some solder which is um, 
sort of suspended in a a, a hard flux and uh, it cleans your tip the very first time you use it. I really recommend that you use that. Oh, the other thing that, that generally I use, you possibly can get away with it. We mentioned the solder. You'll notice it's on red reels, uh, so this is lead solder. Uh, I seriously recommend that uh, if you can get away with it, please use uh, leaded solder. It's much easier than trying to mess with lead free. I do have some lead free. Um, but uh, in general I uh, just uh, use, use leaded um, if I can get away with it. So that's uh, the tools that we're going to be using today. So here's the board and I'm going to remove uh, this chip here and uh, I haven't put, sometimes um, I do put uh, Kapton tape around the, uh, the device I'm going to remove because uh, there are some parts which are fairly close in and we don't really want to remove those. Um, however, what I would say is um, I've done quite a lot of these. Uh, this particular chip is a, it's a common uh, failure mode, so I'm quite used to removing this one and um, and I just just take a lot of care not to, not to remove uh, chips that are just a bit outside. So all I do is, is, is I take the, um, the hot air gun and uh, move it down gradually and I'm looking through the microscope here and um, so hopefully it's okay and uh, we can see stuff and apologize for any uh, yeah there's a bit of a shadow I can see coming down but um, it looks great under the microscope <laughs> unfortunately it's not what you're looking at this is a six layer board by the way so um, we have to have to be a little bit careful here and you can see here that I can feel it moving and then I can just lift it off and that's it how hard was that? So <clears throat> there was no preheat there. That was all it was. Although I had um, warmed the board a little bit uh, with the um, hot air gun before. So the next bit is I need to prepare uh, the area for the next device. And what I do here is I use my uh, sort of thicker of the two solders. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to put these two solders up here and. Um, you can compare them. These are the two two widths. Um, don't know if you can tell how thick they are just by looking at the pitch. So the pitch there is is um, a half millimeter pitch. So I'm going to use slightly thicker stuff with my um, uh, chisel bit here, and I'm just going to basically tin all of these um, pads and the thermal pad. Uh, central thermal pad as well which I'm going to use almost as a uh, if you like pick up for all the excess solder and because uh, we've got that, that big old lump in the middle now I'm going to have to remove all of that solder again now so this is where our um, wonderful wick comes in and just take enough off there. Don't want to take it all off because we do need a little bit of solder to uh, adhere to the, the, the pad of the, the chip itself when I get the new one out and uh, oh uh, to save frustration what I generally do is I, uh, um, every single time after I've used the wick I just snip the end off if you don't do that it gets really frustrating because you'll be <clears throat> right in the middle of trying to use the um, the wick the next time you'll be right in the middle of the job and then you'll find oh I forgot to take the end off the wick so I'm just getting another chip out, there we go, there she blows and I'm going to try to just first of all uh, this, is a, this is actually a brand new bit of uh, flux clean so I'm just going to has that got it out yet? there we go brand new flip, bit of flux cleaner Sorry, not flux cleaner, brand new flux pen. Possibly a little bit too much there, gone a little bit overboard, but um, anyway, let's see how we get on. And then, uh, possibly another important little tip is when you do flip your chip over, make sure it's aligned right. 
A uh, bit of a trick for young players, as Dave might say, uh, is um, it's all too easy just to, in the excitement of, of replacing the chip, to actually put it in, put it on the wrong way around. And you'll notice here that it's not quite flat. Uh, I'm assuming this is just the central pad here. Oh, here we go. There's a little bit of um, solder blob was uh, attached to. Um, Actually, a bit of flux to one of the pads there. So there we go. Don't get it exactly um, accurate, and you can probably tell I probably had one too many coffees this morning. Oh dear, never good in front of the camera, is it? That'll do. I'm not fussy. It doesn't have to be completely aligned. And then I'm going to come down here now because the board's already actually fairly warm. I'm just going to come down here with the uh, hot air iron and uh, let's see what happens. Let's make sure these babies are. You can probably see them starting to melt. You see, it just pulled itself over there. Now I give it a little bit more because I want to see all of the pads uh, melting here because um, without that, not necessarily going to know you've got everything, and I also give it a little bit of a nudge like that. You see that, and I also push it down a little bit. Don't keep it pushed down, but I just want to make sure that everything's tinned and, and working. And there, that'll do. Now you'll see that um, it's not perfect because not all the pads uh, seem to be uh, connected there. So this is the next phase of what we've got to do: is I take the thinner solder, and I also get the um, nice thin soldering iron there we go there we go that's how you do it and go around the chip each side Now, some QFNs um, don't have the uh, leadless uh, connectors going all the way around, from the bottom all the way around to the side. They are a right old pain to get done. And um, all I can tell you there is uh, patience, a lot of flux, or well, not too much flux, but plenty of flux. Um, make sure you've got the right temperature, make sure everything's clean um, before you uh, start soldering. So if there's any grease on there or whatever, uh, not even flux is going to help. You. So make sure all the parts are cleaned and everything. But yeah, um, I think they call it castellations, these um, things when they wrap around. Some of them don't wrap around all the way around, so trying to get this nice connection across between the, the board and, and the... Um, uh, side of the connector is, is quite difficult, but essentially uh, that's almost it. All I'm going to do now is get my flats cleaner There we go, good as new, eh? And then I can go back to test and that's it. That's how you change a QFN. Thanks everybody